Hey everybody, this is D Hunter, bringing another action figure collection video. Today, we're going to be looking at Kenner's The Dark Knight Collection from the 1989 Michael Keaton Batman film. Now, I don't really know the story as to why Toy Biz had the DC license for such a brief period of time, and then it went right back to Kenner. Kenner had them for superpowers, then Toy Biz had them for DC Comics superheroes and the 1989 Batman line, then it went right back to Kenner and they continued with the 1989 Batman line. The Dark Knight Collection is a very cool line of action figures. They definitely stepped the game up from superpowers and from toy business line. There are a ton of vehicles that are very cool. They're very expensive and sought after. I believe I have all the actual figures, but I'm missing the majority of the vehicles from this collection. This is episode 3 in my overall unopened Batman action figure collection. If you're curious to see how massive it is, check out episode 1. I'll put a link in the description below. So, hope you enjoyed the video. Before we dig into this video, let's take a quick look at my overall action figure collection. Here's when I had everything laid out in the house. So I think I've finally done it. I've unpacked all of the figures. As you can see here, we have the Diamond Select Toys Gotham Collection. Here's a bunch of my Mezco unopened figures. Some more Mattel stuff. Here's the Legends of the Dark Knight line. This is the Batman Power Attack line. It's where Batman Unlimited. All my Justice League, Justice League Unlimited stuff. This is the entire DC Direct and DC Collectibles Arkham Collection. Mattel's 1966 line, DC Superhero Girls, all the different NECA Batman figures, some Target exclusive line, all the amazing Yamaguchi figures back there, some Spin Master stuff, the Mattel Batman Missions line. Of course, in the very back, it's my entire comic collection with all the recent McFarlane releases in front. And above that, got a bunch of DC Direct and Mattel figures in the last several years. Moving on, pretty much the entire Mattel's The Batman line. Back here in the back, got my SH Figure Arts Batman figures. This side, we've got all the different Mattel, Dark Knight, Dark Knight Rises, Batman Begins figures, massive amount of piles. Back here we've got the DC Collectibles Batman the Animated Series figures, and a lot of them are on top as well. Can't wait to get to that video. That one and the Arkham Collection and DC Universe Classics. Some videos I'm really excited to do. Here are the Mattel figures. I can see the Batman Legacy, Batman Unlimited, it goes all the way from the original Batman line. Here's the Batmobile. And it's going to go all the way to DC Super Heroes, DC Universe Classics, and Multiverse. A ton of figures. Great era with Mattel. Fun stuff. But I do like what McFarlane's doing. But I do miss these days, that's for sure. Going back to Kenner and Hasbro. Ton of Batman Beyond. Batman the Animated Series stuff. I mean, that just seemed endless to go through. My word. Look at these piles of unopened figures. Batman the Animated Series continues all the way back here. Absolute ton of stuff just stacked up. On top of this table here, got all the Mafex figures and a bunch of one-offs. Some Hasbro, some McFarlane, or Mattel rather, anniversary figures. Amazing Amaguchi. Kia, Sima, all kind of different import type stuff. Then we've got JLA and Total Justice figures. And then on to all the rest of the DC Direct stuff. Bunch of DC Direct Batman related figures. Some more chill in the back here. And I filled up all these shelves temporarily. Just storing all these DC Direct and DC Collectibles figures. And it's almost done. Here's the Mattel Batman Brave and the Bold line. I did not realize how extensive that got. 
And a ton more Brave and the Bold down here. Moving on again. Some old Toy Biz, Super Friends, and DC Superhero figures. Leading into the Dark Knight Collection. Then we'll go to the Batman Returns figures. And then of course, Batman Forever. Batman and Robin. It's a bunch of different Bat Caves. And some more animated stuff in the back there. So here are the figures laid down on the table. At least the figures from Wave 1. At least that's what I read online. I don't know if there was sort of a Wave 1.0, then a 1.5. Because the pictures on the back sort of contradict what I read. We've got Crime Attack Batman, Wall Scaler Batman, Tech Shield Batman, Skyscape Joker, Iron Witch Batman, Shadow Wing Batman, and Bruce Wayne Batman. These are all some really nice figures. The coloring is a lot darker, a lot more gritty. Pretty much all of them except for Tech Shield Batman look like they could be suits from the movie. I love the fact that we have a couple different all black Batmans and we have some blue and gray Batmans. Very nicely done. They sure straight off that path as they went to further films, made more bizarre and outlandish Batmans in these crazy colorful outfits. So let's break down this guy by the first half of the wave and the second half. If anyone out there knows a really good Batman complete action figure checklist, drop me a line in the comments below. Many, many years ago I used to use this website called Legions of Gotham, and the website is still there, but all the links are broken to the different checklists. I found another site. It seems to have a pretty complete list. I'm using that for now. So these four figures are what I deem to be the first half of Wave 1. Crime Attack Batman, Wall Scaler Batman, Tech Shield Batman, and Skyscape Joker. So let's check out the packaging. As you can see at the top, the Dark Knight Collection, ages 4 plus. Got the old school Batman logo, Keaton's Batman head here, Crime Attack Batman, uses his batarang and claw to stop dangerous criminals. Here he's in the package, has a missile launcher with a couple missiles, and that's a ridiculous accessory. But we have this classic looking black Batman suit. He's got the gold belt, the yellow oval, it looks good. Backside here, little instruction of how to use the accessory. And then the checklist. Now this checklist only has these four figures as well as four vehicles. Now vehicles are great, especially these two. They were not in the film by any means, but they look very good. They match the aesthetic of the film. They look some regular Batman vehicles, the helicopter and the jet, cycle two, and even the Joker cycle is not bad. But this is why I believe this to be the first half of wave one. These figures must have dropped first, and then the other three. Now we have Wall Scaler Batman. This card is definitely in bad shape. You can see how bent it is. I think I got it like that. Maybe it happened while I was in storage. Kind of hope not. Wall Scaler Batman. Uses his climbing action pack to scale up and down walls. Has his pack here. Has a sort of rope that you can attach to the top and bottom, and then he can sort of zip line across it. Backside, same checklist, the four figures, the four vehicles, a couple of large items. Then we have Tech Shield Batman. NECA did a re release of this guy, and it's really cool uses his flight pack and shield suit to escape from danger. He is in the wildest outfit, the gold outfit, does not match the film. Sort of their first step towards straying in all this crazy Batman variants. Backside, same checklist, just the four figures. Then we have Sky Escape Joker. Uses whirling copter pack to escape from trouble. Too bad he didn't have this in the film. Looks kind of like Jack Nicholson here. Does not look at all like Jack Nicholson here. I wonder if Kenner didn't acquire the likeness rights for him. I just don't know the answer to that. He has a little sort of helicopter backpack thing. The long pistol. Very appropriate Joker accessory. And of course, his face will change color. So you can have him with the makeup on and the makeup off. That is actually a really cool feature. And something that he did in the film a couple times. Same checklist, same four figures, same four vehicles. Now I don't have any of these four figures loose. 
But keep in mind, my loose Batman collection is typically 6 and 7 inch scale. I didn't really bother with any of the 5 inch figures as they don't really do anything to enhance my open action figure world. As a kid, I had Tech Shield Batman. I might have had Crime Attack Batman. Definitely didn't have the others. I would have liked to have had one of these movie jokers, but I'm pretty sure I only had the Toy Biz version. And then here's what I believe is the second half of Wave 1. Iron Winch Batman, Shadow Wing Batman, Bruce Wayne Batman. Now as a kid, pretty sure I had Iron Winch Batman. He looks very familiar to me, and I love that color scheme. Looks like the comics. I think I had Shadow Wing Batman. I definitely had a Batman that would stretch his arms out like that and glide. Might have been one from Batman Returns if they had one like that as well. And I definitely had a Bruce Wayne Batman, but I'm pretty sure mine was the Batman Returns version. Kind of hard to tell. I'm pretty sure they look exactly the same. Very nice figures. Like the way they look. So let's take a peek at the packaging. Same thing at the top. Dark Knight Collection. Iron Winch Batman. Battering Winch. Reels Criminals in. Large Missile Launcher. And it probably has a rope attached to the missile base. Love that blue and gray color scheme. Backside. Checklist is a little bit bigger. It has more figures. You can see they added the Bruce Wayne Batman, a couple of the other ones. They've taken some off as well. But that's sort of the nature of action figures. Just got to move forward. Now there are instructions how to use accessory. Looks like, yes, it does have rope attached to the missile. Then we have Shadow Wing Batman. Very, very cool concept. I mean, look at this thing. Marked down to $2.50 at Toy Liquidators. His arms would sort of outstretch. I think he'd squeeze his legs or something. And then he'd be able to glide. Very new concept. Action figures' arms could not move out of that point. So it was very cool. He has large sort of battering type thing. Cape spreading pop-up arms and handcuffs. I guess these are some giant oversized handcuffs. The backside, same checklist as Iron Witch Batman, some of the extra figures, some of the original figures missing. This card is an excellent shape compared to a lot of the other ones. Just has that annoying sticker on it. Now here's Bruce Wayne Batman. Quick change suit turns Bruce Wayne into Batman. Now whenever I had these quick change Batmans, they always looked so bad. Just putting the mask on top would look so bulky, but it was still such a cool concept. Come with gloves, and then a cowl, and a chest piece. The rest of the suit was already sort of black. Now I like the fact the figure has that turtleneck. Doesn't look like Keaton, but sort of does. Kind of wonder if they had likeness rights back then, or if they just made him look sort of vague on purpose. Backside, you can see an example of the two of them changing. And the checklist is the same on all three of these figures. And here's the Series 2 assortment. We have Thunder Whip Batman, Power Wing Batman, and Knockout Joker. Now, I thought I had the Crime Attack Batman, and I still kind of think I did as a kid, but it could have been one of these Batman figures. The bodies pretty much look exactly the same, all in the black suit. Then we have Knockout Joker. It's a very nice Joker, definitely not wearing the outfit in the proper color from the film. So let's take a look at the packaging. As you can see, Thunder Whip Batman, spinning arm makes weapons whirl. He's got these ridiculously large accessories that have no bearing on reality. There was a Batman Ninja Star cut out of the film. Maybe that was based on that concept. Nice black suit. Backside. The checklist has changed yet again. We have the Series 2 figures on here. The Series 1.5 figures on there. And there are some new vehicles. There's a Batwing. Batmobile, and that Batmobile is absolutely fantastic, very sought after. Then there's Power Wing Batman. Fires missile, flying wing lands upside down. So we have sort of a glider thing with a missile launcher. Kind of reminds me of the Green Goblin. Pretty cool figure. Once again, that black suit. They got a lot of use out of that mold, that's for sure. The checklist is the same has the newer vehicles and the new wave of figures. Now on the majority of Batman figures, except for the one that's gliding, they did use exactly the same sculpt. Quite a bit of use out of that one mold. Then we have Knockout Joker with a bazooka and powerful weapon. So you can see he has a sort of plaid pants, 
but they're painted in such a basic way it just doesn't really work and that wasn't the color in the film this giant oversized gun and then his bang pistol very appropriate joker accessory backside same checklist from this wave and now let's move on to the deluxe figures batman with claw climber accessory batman with night glider accessory and then batman with blast shield accessory these are some figures with some oversized accessories they're actually pretty cool all these figures have a kb toys price tag on them i don't think they were kb toys exclusive but it is possible let's check out the package the dark knight collection batman claw climber accessory deluxe crime master edition it comes with this giant sort of bat thing that will climb up walls Climbs like a bat, wings move, and missile fires. Fireproof cobalt suit. Notice it has sort of like a purple or red tint to it. Looks pretty cool. It's a decent variant. It's visually pleasing. The backside here, there is no traditional checklist. They just sort of give instructions on the accessory and some more instructions down below. You can see the figure here. Looks kind of cool. Matches the purple packaging. Then Batman with his Night Glider accessory, Deluxe Crime Master Edition, comes with a giant gliding thing like this, which is kind of cool. He used something very similar in Batman Returns. Giant Glider has movable wings and a capture hook. Steel Guard suit blocks radiation, kind of a bluish suit. Backside here, a ton of instructions on his accessory and some more you can see he's supposed to snare down the joker and capture him that's how the suit would look then we have batman with his blast shield deluxe crime master edition double barrel bola missile really fires bulletproof your iridium suit very dark suit different kind of black suit looks good Backside, you can see his shield getting put together. Then he can hold a shield in front of him with a missile launcher, with a rope attached, can capture the Joker. That's how the suit would look. Pretty cool variants. Come with some pretty cool oversized accessories. Have no bearing on the film, but are cool nonetheless. Now here are the two vehicles I have unopened. We have Batman and his Bola Bullet vehicle. He came in a later assortment. And then we have the Joker cycle. He came with the initial swarm of figures. And now the Joker cycle was not in the film, but I thought it might be kind of cool have a couple of these for your Joker gang. It's a pretty basic bike. It is actually complete reuse from a motorcycle from the Robocop line. Or in turn, the Robocop one was probably reused from this guy. He's got the firing Joker face in the front. The Joker cycle fires the Joker mask at enemies. Backside, you can see the vehicle. And there's a little checklist with a bunch of the other vehicles. And then the Batman Bola Bullet. It's a pretty small thing. He fits inside of. He fires a missile. Looks like it has some kind of string between the two missiles. Backside, it's instructions how to fire the missile. And a bunch of other vehicles here. Don't remember seeing this one before. And as far as which one of these vehicles, I have both open and unopened. I have two of the Joker Cycles loose. Now they're really far too small for what I typically collect. You can fudge some 6 inch scale Joker Thug Movie Master figures on there though. And as far as which other vehicles I have open from this collection, I have both the Batcopter and the Batjet. I don't have them unopened. They fetch a pretty penny like that nowadays. But I do have them both loose and complete. I got them way back in the day. Because there's some really cool, regular looking vehicles. It looks like something from the 1999 Batman film he might actually use. They are too small for my 6 and 7 inch collection, but there's some nice background vehicles for the Batcave. I did get to scratch my itch for a 1989 Batmobile Batwing from the Toy Biz collection. Now both these vehicles are quite inferior to the Kenner Dark Knight collection Batmobile and Batwing. The only thing this Batmobile has going for it is it has this removable cocoon. 
I'd be really curious if that cocoon fits on the Dark Knight Collection Batmobile. Now this Batmobile inside, it doesn't have a top canopy. It still looks great, but it totally detracts from the car. Now the one from the Dark Knight Collection has that canopy and it slides forward and back. Really wish I had that vehicle. It's magnificent. And then this Toy Biz Batwing here, it came with some sort of handle underneath it so you could hold it like a gun. Really stupid. Had to take that thing off there. It looks good, but the Dark Knight Collection one looks even better. On the back of the card here, you can see the Batmobile and it has a canopy. You can also see the Batwing. The Batwing, it looks pretty similar, but the coloring on the Bat symbols, just the Batwing overall looks better and it's going to lay on the floor flatter. And this Batmobile, my word, it looks perfect. I really wish I had one of those. Now that might be the end of Kenner's The Dark Knight Collection, but it continues in one way, shape, or form. Here's a two-pack from the Batman Movie Collection. You can see at the top there, it's got the 89 logo and Batman name. It's Batman vs. the Joker. So you get yet another variation of Batman and Joker. He does come with a reuse accessory, the bang pistol, the Batman handcuffs, but still pretty cool. They made a set like this for Batman, Batman Returns, and Batman Forever. On the back side, you can see it's by Kenner. It says 1997 in the description there, so I'm assuming that's the year it was released. And you can see the three different packs here. I think it's pretty cool that they did that. In recent history, NECA made a Batman Keaton Batman. It was actually an homage to the Toy Biz version, but one could argue it's sort of a re-release of any of these Black Suit Keaton Batmans. And NECA did make a direct homage to the Tech Shield Batman. They made their 7-inch version, and it is fantastic. It got released as a Loot Crate exclusive, but was originally supposed to be some sort of art show exclusive in France, something like that. They didn't flat out say that, but the pack of the package here kind of shows the dates of this event, and I believe it's in French if I remember correctly. Kind of interesting. Love NECA's homage figures. They make a bunch of Kenner throwback in different various lines. Robocop, Terminator, Alien and Predator, and then kind of similar to what the other action figure lines do, NECA did make a bunch of different variations of this mold. We've got the gold tech shield Batman, the black suit traditional Keaton Batman, and on the right, we have a purple, I believe it was a Nintendo throwback Batman. One thing I did fail to mention in this video, they were originally going to make the Wayne Manor compound a Batcave combo set in the Dark Knight collection. I remember seeing them in some of those toy booklets that some of the toys would come with, a little catalog for future releases. I guess that idea got scrapped. Maybe the retailers were hesitant to pick up such an expensive item. But it got released with Batman Returns, Batman Forever, I believe Batman Robin, Batman Animated Series at least two different times. So it definitely got the retailers to get on board after they saw the success of the Batman 1989 film series. So that was my review of the Dark Knight Collection Kenner series. It's a fantastic action figure wave. A lot darker and grittier. Most of the figures look like they could actually exist in the movie universe. As Kenner progressed through the other different series, they got a little wilder, a little more creative, a lot more kitty. Dark Knight Collection will always have a special place in my heart. I remember I was five years old when that movie came out. I had the figures afterwards. And there's a lot of nostalgia tied to this wave. The vehicles are fantastic. Very hard to acquire nowadays. And the figures themselves are pretty good. Sure, they're dated to nowadays action figure standards. But back then, they were almost revolutionary, groundbreaking figures. Looking forward to doing episode 4. That's going to be Kenner's Batman Returns collection. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. This is D Hunter. Thank you guys for watching. If you liked the video, press like below. If you have anything you want to say about the video, add to the comment section. If you want to see additional action figure collection videos and action figure reviews, press subscribe. I do appreciate when you do that. Once again, this is D Hunter. Thank you guys for watching this video. And I will talk to you guys real soon.